All right, everybody, let's get into it. Episode four of Teed Up. We got Luca Garza here. Um, if you don't if you don't know who that is, you're probably listening to the wrong podcast. I'm gonna be honest. It was good. Not should not need much of an introduction. Um, we started off. Want to shout out our people over at Hames Homes. Hames Homes provides comfort, beauty, and value in Eastern Iowa. Well, yeah, let, let's get into it. LG, what's up, big fella? How you doing? You good? How's Detroit? I'm chilling, man. I'm here in the D. Uh, it's been good. Everything's been good. Been good. New apartment. New yeah, apartment. Yeah. Got, <laughs> that's yeah. nice. I, I got to come see it. I got to come see it. Um, and you told me, you told me that your pops has been has been with you most of the time, as he was during college as well. Um, you know, I obviously know how close you guys are and the, the relationship that you guys have. Um, you know, what's it just just go into a, a little bit of, you know, the how close how close you two are. I mean, I know you can't really say enough in terms of and you've already said so much, but, uh, you know, just just go into your guys relationship just a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, now he's he's pretty much my roommate now. You know, I got a, I got a two bedroom here in Detroit, and uh, you know, obviously he's he's um, it, it's awesome for me that he you know is able to come to all my games. You know, I feel like that's something that not a lot of athletes you know are able to have with their parents and, and their ability to travel, and and so I'm very fortunate in that area. So yeah, you know, he stays with me, comes to all my NBA games as well, travels on the road. He didn't go up to Toronto. Uh, that's the only game he's kind of missed on the on the NBA level. Um, but no, nah, it's, uh, it's, it's been incredible. You know, uh, he's a guy who, you know, obviously taught me the game and, uh, you know, he's inspired me most of my life. And so now, you know, we're we kind of moved past that kind of coach player relationship. And now he kind of like guides me and helps me with things I need, watches some films, stuff like that, and, and gives me advice. And, and now it's just kind of, uh, more of a, you know, re- there's a respect there now, obviously for the level that I'm at, um, and, and everything that we've been through. So I, I go to him when, you know, I need to, and, and obviously he just enjoys, you know, seeing me play at this level um, because for both of us, it's something that, you know, when I was growing up, we didn't, we didn't think this was, uh, this was possible with how slow I was moving. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, nah, Frank's, Frank's, Frank's the best. I mean, everybody see, you know, he, he's posted videos of your guys' workouts and he's, you know, it, it, the, the work that he's put in with you, you know, people don't, people really don't understand. I mean, you know, I, I always go back to when we were, I think we were like freshmen or sophomores. And I've said this to you before. I walk in the gym, it's like 9 a.m. And you're in a full sweat. And he's purposely throwing you bad passes to like work on your hands. Like you guys, you're doing the workout, like you're working on your game. But like, I mean, everybody know like one of the reasons you're so good is because you literally catch everything. Like I know that obviously, like you catch everything. But He's like part of that is because of him. Like that's such an underrated part. Like a lot of big guys are really good, but they have bad hands. You did you're like that is so underrated. Like he's literally throwing you the worst passes I've ever seen, screaming at you to catch them. Like he's throwing at your feet, over your head, and that like that's what that's what you were working on, and that that's the type of things that like he would do with you. Always intentional. He he was a scorer. He wasn't a passer. That's for damn sure. <laughs> uh, sometimes some passes, y'all. He, nah, but no, nah, he's always been. He's always been keen on doing stuff differently than other people. And so when we go in the gym, um, it doesn't matter how long we're in there. There's an intent. There's a purpose to everything we're doing. And every detail matters. And he's got that from my grandpa and all the coaches that he's been coached by. Um, and it's and it's kind of cool. Like, you know, obviously, the let the peacock fly kind of emerged him as a social media guy. Um, and now he's, like, in love with Twitter. But it, it actually has provided <laughs> a platform to be able to kind of show with some of the stuff that he's, he's done as kind of a trainer, as a coach, as what he's shown me um, with, you know, both on the mental side of the game and also with the physical, with all the different drills and, and different videos he posts. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of cool to see that. Um, and, he, and he, you know, he has a lot of fun with it and he, he kind of loves that stuff. So there's bars to draw that with that whole um, fly thing. <laughs> bro, that, that was hilarious. That was yeah. hilarious. And he took that and ran with it too. Oh god, it was it was crazy. I still can remember like I I turned off social media and Twitter for like that whole, you know, because during our sophomore year we had kind of had that that moment in the year. I think it was at the Wisconsin game, everyone was like, Oh, we're deleting every social media app, we're not listening to anything, we're like locked in on the on the rest of the year and trying to 
make sure that we can make a run at something in the tournament. And uh, so I hadn't checked my phone, check, check Twitter or anything. So till after we played Tennessee and uh, I got to my phone and everything's about my dad. I'm like, damn, I, I thought I had 20 in the first round. I thought it'd be a couple of tweets about me, man. I, like, I thought I played well, but no, it's all about my dad, all about let the peacock fly, all about this. And like, I couldn't find any tweets about myself. So no, it was, it was, it was, it was awesome though. And, and since then, you know, he's obviously, um, he's done a lot of good with that, with the t-shirts and all that other stuff. And, and he's kind of made that his brand. That was, that was really his emergence. Like that's when like yeah. Mike became known to, the, <laughs> to like everybody. And, like everybody who's ever played with me on any team, they know who my dad is just cause like you can hear him in the stands. He's always there practice, you know, when like, no matter what he's going to be there, he wants to see everything. And, uh, and, and, you know, obviously that's, that's incredible for me. Um, but no, everyone on my teammates kind of knows his personality. So it's, it was kind of cool to see more of the fans and other people kind of see what, what he, what he's like. Yeah, no. Yeah. He, he is definitely like a very strong personality. Nobody can deny that, but your mom is who I want to hit on next, both your mom and your sister. They, they're definitely both a little bit more under the radar. Um, you know, they, you know, not as many, like he's, he's out and he's at every game and your mom, you know, she's, I mean, nicest, nicest woman in the world, but she's definitely a little bit more reserved than Frank, a little bit more quiet. Um, I think most people in America are, but <laughs> um, you know, that I want you, I want you to talk a little bit about uh, a little bit about, your, the relationship you have with her as well. And, um, you know, we, we saw the video on Twitter yesterday. I think your dad posted it. We can go, we go back to, I go back to like, I think it was like sophomore year. And we were talking about like, you know, what we were going to do. And, uh, and, or it may have been junior year. And you're like, yeah, like the first thing I'm going to do when I get, you know, when I make, when I make some real money is buy my mom a car. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm going to buy my mom a car. You know, she she takes the bus to work sometimes. Like she travels like so much, and it's not easy. And you're like, I'm buying her a car. That's the and that's I mean, it's it's amazing, obviously. And and you know, we we saw that yesterday. We saw her reaction. You know, she was she was crying. Um, just talk a little bit about you know how how amazing she is and the the relationship you have with with her and and your sister and what what that means to you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that was. You know, that was obviously one of the most incredible moments of my life to be able to be in a position where I could do something like that. You know, it, it was really cool. But yeah, you're right. It's something I've been looking forward to doing uh, for a long time and, and being able to be in a position to, to do that for her and for my family. Um, so that was that was a really cool moment. And uh, I know she loved it. You know, my uh, her dad was a big you know Mercedes Benz guy, had a bunch of different nice Mercedes Benz. So it was important for me to do that kind of that way and it was uh it was really special and you know it was almost you know yeah. uh, the whole best part of the holidays you know obviously my birthday's in 27th and everything like that but uh that was the best feeling i've ever got no gift that i've got myself or anything has, has made me feel that way in, in terms of giving her that so you know that was awesome and you know uh, she you know people don't know this but she's a she's the real pro in the family you know my dad didn't play pro basketball you know she did and uh her and her twin sister played pro and and so she knows a lot about the game and, and uh, you know, honestly, she, you know, she, uh, she watches every single game. Obviously she doesn't, she doesn't come to all of them cause she works and stuff like that. But uh, she watches and she's a, she's a harder critique than my dad. You know, I'll get phone calls if I'm playing bad, I get phone calls and she's a, she's on, she's on me, man. And uh, she's, you know, critiquing every little thing. And, and sometimes my dad will be, you know, a little bit more soft just, um, because he, he, he knows what I'm doing and how much work I put into it. But my mom, she doesn't care. She, she recognizes if I'm not playing well, uh, she's on me. And that, that's to this day, it's the same way. And, you know, I, I appreciate it. And it really means a lot to me to have both parents that, you know, are so invested in my game and, and, and uh, you know, love watching me play. But it's, it's really cool. And when they're together, they really, you know, like you said, my mother's more quiet and reserved. And when it's time for her to talk, she's going to talk. But, um, She's, they kind of balance each other out. And uh, so it's, it's kind of fun when they had a game together um, and it, kind of seeing them in the crowd. And so, no, it was, it was really special. And I have a really close relationship with her as well as my sister. My sister was, you know, someone who hated the game of basketball. You know, my dad tried to get her to play. And I remember one time I was at practice and he just wanted her to watch. And I looked over there and she is turned around facing the wall, the, the, just the brick wall. We're all practicing on the court. And she's, instead of watching us, 
she would rather look just at the cement wall, <laughs> like, like the game of basketball. But, you know, uh, she comes to my games, she watches all my games. And that's, again, just, uh, you know, how supportive my family is of me is, is part of the reason I'm here because they give me so much motivation to be able to uh, work so hard and stuff like that is because they, they support me. And so she, she watches my games though. You know, she hates, you won't ever catch her watching any sports, any basketball, but when I'm playing, she's watching and that, that means a lot to me. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's tough. Now we're kind of transitioning into basketball. You want to talk about your uh, recruiting process here for a little bit, just kind of like, you play for a team takeover and just kind of go into that whole AAU scene and then just your recruiting process as well. Yeah, for sure. You know, obviously, you know, um, we were going to a dead period and uh, I never, um, I hadn't played in a while. I was coming off of surgery and it was my sophomore year going into my junior year and uh, we were playing all Iowa attack and then it was a dead period. So no coaches could be there, um, but coach Frank could be there because, you know, I was playing against Connor and, uh, and so our whole, like, all our coaches staff is like, oh, there's no coach here, but the Iowa coach, like, he's here. It's a big opportunity for all you guys, like, go out there and hoop, do what you can do. And so, like, you know, me not thinking, I just went out there and played. And, and you know, it was, it was it was my first game back in, uh, like, three months, three, four months. But I happened to play pretty well. Um, there was some uh, some kid, big kid from the other team, and I, and I was killing him. Um, but it, it was uh, – we lost. You know, the all Iowa attack was pretty good, and they beat us. But – um, you know, I ended up seeing Connor at Nike Lee 100, you know, maybe a month later. And I hadn't heard anything from Iowa since then. So, you know, I knew he saw me. I didn't know if he liked me or not. And, uh, you know, I, I see Connor and like within the first 10 minutes, he's like, yo, uh, my dad wants to offer you. And I'm like, I hadn't had a high major offer at this point. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? I got an offer from like, you know, uh, Binghamton was my first offer. And I hadn't had like any really good offers at that point. I'm like, you're lying. Man. And so we, we got to know each other. Me and Connor were just kind of, he was, we were hanging around each other the whole, the whole time um, throughout the whole camp. We weren't on the same team, but you know, I, I always saw like coach Fran managed to get to every single one of my games. And so I was like, so, so there, there might be something here. And uh, he would always kind of look at me. He'd wink after every game. He winked at me like 15 times that, that weekend. So I'm like, okay, he, he actually might offer me. And after that, he, he called me, the day after I got back home from that camp and he offered me and, and uh, you know, we had a great conversation about everything and about, you know, what I could do at Iowa and what he saw for me. And, you know, since that moment, you know, he was, he was there every step of the way. Um, and, and, and so were you guys obviously. And, uh, you know, not only just Connor, but Joe, you know, Wee's camp when he committed early, you know, I saw him at a different camp and he, he was talking to me all the time and, and, uh, you know, so it was it was awesome to be recruited by pretty much everyone that was a part of the program. And I came on two visits. You know, I came one time and, um, you know, I'm from D.C. So when I landed, I'm like, I'm in Cedar Rapids. I'm looking around. I don't see anything. I don't see a building in sight. I'm like, I'm like where am I? And uh, you know, but I get down to Iowa City and I, I was just like, yo, this is really cool. And it was like a weekend where they had a, a girls basketball game and a guys basketball game. Then there was a wrestling event outside and they beat Oklahoma State and then that night they played Minnesota in football and it was just like seeing all the fans seeing the whole environment of of everything and then obviously getting to meet all the players and and just get to talk to Coach Fran more um, it was pretty clear like my whole uh, recruiting process that Iowa was my number one and, and uh, towards the end of my recruitment a lot of high major programs started to come around uh, during the summer and uh, you know I I rewarded the loyalty in the end because I knew, you know, there was one coach that, you know, saw me at, at different stages. I was a little bit overweight, slower, and then I became kind of, you know, was working on my speed and getting better. And, you know, he liked me as much when I was, you know, overweight. And then when I was skinny, you know, he liked me the whole time. He knew what my game could do. And uh, and that meant a lot to me. So I knew, you know, it, it was a, it was the right place for me. Um, so it ended up being the, the perfect fit. You know, I, I couldn't have made a better uh, decision if I if I tried. Does the does the DMV have the best hoopers? Is that is that a fact? It's not close, man. You, know, you can look through everywhere. You know, when you can even look on our team, we got we got a whole list of, of DMV guys. We now got they, we picked up uh, Justin Robinson on a ten day, so we have three guys from my high school league, which is not even like the third or fourth best high school league in our area, and like. And uh, we have three of guys on one NBA team, which is kind of crazy. And obviously, you know, WCAC with the Matha, 
Paul the Six, O'Connell. Um, there's so many legendary programs from our area. And, you know, you got guys like KD, Quinn Cook. You know, we can we can go down the line. I was got my boy, my boy Beasley. <laughs> yeah, Michael Beasley. <laughs> yeah, DC Assault. I mean, Team Takeover. We, yeah, no, it's it's crazy. And when you when you're watching like the WCAC, it's like watching a high major basketball because you got three, four guys that are going high major on each team, and then you got guys coming off the bench who are you know, mid major, good good D one players. Um, so that level of competition that that kind of made me the player I became, you know, as a kid was having to go against those kind of guys, um, you know, as scrappy, quick little guards, got me better with my hands. Like you said, it was a lot about like, if I caught the ball and it was low, I was getting stripped every single time just because the speed and the athleticism I grew up playing against. So that helped me develop my hands and be able to, you know, get the ball away from uh, faster, quicker players, but not DMV. DMV is where the best hoops are at. And, uh, you know, some people say Cali and, and all of that, but, you know, for that kind of small area of, of Hoovers to be from, I, th- you know, I think we got like one of the highest percentage in terms of getting to the NBA. So, no, that's I'll rest my case with being the best Hoovers. I I, I can't argue it. I mean, you like you think about the players that have come come from there. Like we were, I told I told you this. We were talking the other day. I was talking to BT and uh, Billy Taylor, one of our assistant coaches, and I was like, BT, like why can why is every good player from like maryland or dc like what what and he was like he was like dude like my best players at uh belmont abbey were from the dmv like one of my dad's best players from siena is from the DMV. like every team we play like they have a dude from the dmv who can hoop like we just like keep and i'm like why is that and he's like i don't know it, i don't know what I don't it is no like i usually know pretty much everybody who comes from the dmv but i'll, I'll come across a guy like Frank Jackson on our team, he went to Duke. You know, he, I had no idea he was from Maryland. He, he's born and raised, lives in Maryland. His, his, his brother goes to a school that, you know, I used to play against in high school. And, like, so you just see that, and there's just – there's a list of guys that, that are so talented um, that, you know, we're able to do that. And so, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's fun to play basketball back home. Yeah, yeah. For the people that don't know, the DMV is, like, it's an area – like DC, way, Maryland, Virginia. It's not where you yeah. go for your car. No, that's a different. <laughs> yeah, that's a different. DC, Maryland, Virginia. Like that's that area. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what we're talking about. If you if you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. No. For sure. Um. I wanna. I wanna hit on a little bit. Um. Freshman year, like, cause you you came in. You. I remember, like, we were. I mean, for that, that's the year we that's the year we all talk about 14 and 19. Um, you know, we we joked about it as we moved on from it. But during that time coming into that season, we were supposed to be good. We had good players. There was just something missing. And one thing that never changed was like you playing hard and you coming into work and staying in the gym and me and you like we would go to Carver late night and you would even go like more than me. And like, you were, I mean, you just kept, you know, kept working, kept working. And I obviously, I wasn't on, I didn't actually play on that team, but you know, I, I sat and I was, you know, I saw everything and was in practices sometimes and just, uh, you know, just the, what we kind of went through that year. And obviously we weren't very good. Like what, what were your, what were your thoughts? What were your thoughts on that entire season? Oh, that was, you know, it was one of the toughest years or toughest seasons I've ever had, you know, going into that, you know, obviously you're playing in high school and growing up, you're, you're never playing on a losing team, you know, especially being a, you know, a good player from a good area and stuff like that. I've never been on a team that, you know, would, would struggle to win games. And, and that's what it was. It just felt like every game we went in, we just, it was hard to find a way to win. And it, and it kind of just kind of got you know, dipped in some cold water in terms of waking up to the level of the big 10 play and all the guys that there was, you know, Guarding Isaac Haas and he's like elbowing me. I'm getting bloody noses running down the court, and uh, you know we're, we're losing games by 30. You know it, it was tough, and and it taught me a lot, and it also kind of made me, uh, you know, appreciate the the good times and the winning teams that we had after that so much more. Um, especially like that that sophomore year, just that difference in one year. I felt like our whole team um, when we came back going into the next year, we had a whole. A uh, whole different mindset, and you know, we just weren't gonna allow that to happen again. Um, but no, it, it 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 taught me a lot. But you know, I know for and you know, really, when I was going to the gym extra, that was just 
kind of getting some my mind off, you know, the losing, you know, and, and clarity and just being able to work uh, no matter what's going on because, you know, it's all good when you're going to the gym, you're having a good season, all that, you're getting extra shots if you feel good, but what are you doing when you're not having a good season or you're losing games or you're not playing well, you got to do the same things even more, uh, even more so. So, uh, but it was, it was great for me to experience a team tr transition in one year from being that bad to a very good team, one of the best teams in the country and being a overtime away from the sweet 16 um, in, in just, you know, 12 months and uh, with the same players, you know, we got, we got, we got Wheezy, but you know, most of the guys in the starting lineup were the same guys from the year before. We obviously added you as well, Connor. I and mean, you played a couple games my freshman year, but obviously didn't make it all the way through. So, you know, that was, it was, uh, you know, it very impactful to me going on, especially in terms of being a leader and, and seeing what that could do in, in the next year that we have. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I felt like we were just like, we had good players. I just felt like there was like, we just weren't connected. And that, like, the next year, we kind of, like, we just figured it out. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a tough year. Like, you know, the, the Big Ten wasn't, like, the best in terms of, like, among the other leagues as it had been in our last three years. But every team was still good. You know, like, we were all kind of at the same level. We didn't get that many teams in the tournament. But, you know, Michigan, we almost beat them in, in the Big Ten tournament. And, you know, I, you can hear – Coach Beeline and me talk about that, you know, almost every day. He comes up to me talking about that, that Big Ten tournament game where we almost kind of ruined their season because if we beat them there, you know, who knows if they go to the Final Four that year because they probably wouldn't have got as good of a seed. They wouldn't have won the Big Ten championship, obviously. And uh, so, no, nah, but it's 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 kind of crazy because that's really how it was. We weren't we weren't that far away. You know, we were, you know, uh, we, had, we had enough players um, and, and we were just missing something. I think we were able to gain that in the next year and uh and we were able to figure it out in a 21 season and like i said almost make it to the sweet 16. yeah and then and then after that year where you guys came back that was, then the next year was my freshman year and that was the year that like you were a good player but then you really kind of came onto the scene like that year as like as like one of the best players in the country probably the best player in the country except according to dumbass Dayton fans. <laughs> but uh, everybody else thought it was true. But uh, anyways, so just kind of talk about, like, what went into that and what did you do differently that offseason as opposed to, like, before or previously? Because that was the year that you really kind of, that you really blew up and became, like, a household name in college basketball. For sure. I mean, that was, you know, one of the – one of the – the off seasons of my life that I put the most, most work into, you know, I, I, I was going in into that with a, with a, a couple of different goals. One was, you know, I shot 29 from three, my junior year, or my sophomore year. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't okay with that. You know, I thought that wasn't a good enough percentage for me. I knew how, how good of a shooter I was. And uh, so I went down, watched a lot of film. With my dad kind of broke down my whole shot. We almost, you know, tweaked my shot a little bit. And, you know, I don't really tell, a lot of people that, but we kind of changed my form a little bit because, um, you know, I was missing short a lot and I couldn't get it there. And, uh, you know, we kind of worked on that a lot. And, uh, you know, obviously making a change in your form that you've been shooting for you know, your whole life is tough. So that means you got to put in a lot of reps. Um, but, you know, that it, it, it changed the course of my career in that aspect. And, um, and, and, you know, also I hit the weight room, you know, I had to get a lot bigger. You know, I went from, you know, I was like you know, 240 to almost like 260 uh, going into my junior year. I knew I had to be uh, bigger. I knew I was now going to be playing the five instead of the four. I was going to get more of the post-up looks that, you know, kind of Tyler was getting in the past. Um, and I wanted to be ready for that. But, you know, I'd, I'd say the biggest thing that changed in me was, you know, my mental approach. You know, I, I decided to make a focus on working on the mental side of the game because I felt like my sophomore year, there was uh, a lot of times that I felt I was playing bad. And it wasn't because of anything physical. It was because, you know, I was you know, nervous. I was antsy. I was, you know, um, I wasn't making the right decisions. I wasn't calm, I was cool, collected. I wasn't any of that. And, uh, you know, that's when I got into meditation and a lot of other things that, you know, um, altered, you know, the, the course of my career, I think. And, uh, you know, it, it, it changed the player that I became into. And I think when I really kind of stepped into that was that Michigan game. And that was the first game I'd ever done. I called my dad up and his business partner. I'm like, I'm trying all these meditations by myself, but it's it's hard to do it by myself. Like, let's do a, a group one. And, uh, you know, we were able to get on a call. We did it. And uh, shout out, G. And that was uh, the, the Michigan game. And obviously that, that went pretty well for myself. 
And uh, after that, you know, it kind of just kind of took over. It changed my whole confidence going to every game. And I was able to do that and, and go into um, every game with a you know fresh mind. I wasn't worried about, you know, anything people were saying on the TV or Twitter. And it didn't matter to me. I just wanted to go out there and help the team win. And I was able to, able to do that with meditation. And, you know, the, the cool part, and, you know, I started talking about it in the, the press and different stuff like that. And, you know, obviously you guys know that, you know, I had, I, I had a group of you guys come with me. We all did meditations together. And I think that helped, you know, ourselves my, my last year of college. And I thought that was something that was really cool. Um, you know, that I was able to, uh, you know, my, my dad's business partner was able to help us with. Yeah. No, you, I remember we played, uh, I was playing baseball that year and you were talking about like the type of work that you put in and whatnot. And we're, I was playing baseball and you came at, and we were playing at Maryland. And yeah. you came and picked me up after the game. And I'm like, yo, like, I'm, I'm starving. Like, we got to get some food. Like, what's, it was like 11 at night. I'm like, what's open? And you're like, yeah, like, I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of on a diet right now. And yeah. I was like, what do you mean? Like, what kind of diet? And you're like, you know, just like some grilled chicken and stuff. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I'm like, can you, can you eat, like, can we go get some pizza? Like, what, what's open? And he's like, oh, no, like, we can get pizza. Yeah, but I, I can't eat it. And I'm like, okay, well, what else is on your diet? And you're like, no. Like I'm only eating grilled chicken. That's it. <laughs> I'm literally only eating grilled chicken. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It wasn't the <laughs> most supervised diet. You know, it was just, I was like, "What are you talking?" My dad kind of working through my meals and giving me like scraps of food. Uh, no, I was. It was. Uh, it, it worked out. You know, I was able to help define me and stuff. It like worked that. out great. I mean, <laughs> we went to. We did. I did take you to Lido's though, which is probably one of the best uh, pizza spots. Bro, in, in fire Vegas. pizza. Very so good. good. Uh, Lido's pizza. Uh, very, very good. Um, I wasn't able to have any that night, but you know, I've had a lot in the past. Um, but no, I've always, you know, I try a lot of different things with my diet and different stuff like that. Cause I feel, I'm one of those athletes that if I, you know, if I have a week or a couple of days of eating bad and eating fast food, I'm instantly gaining weight and I'm, you know, and in, in the wrong places and stuff like that. So I always got to stay kind of sharp on that. And, uh, you know, I obviously had to do kind of the same thing this you know off season going into 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 the NBA and that kind of changed my whole body and stuff like that with the you know extreme diet so I'm always kind of doing things like that and, and trying to make changes in different ways to help me kind of succeed but no nah, that was that was a funny story and it was it was a uh, yeah it was a fun game in at Maryland I remember yeah we lost that guy hit, I hit a home run and yeah their shortstop hit a 500 foot home run <laughs> we had the closer of the year and we like their shortstop was like five for five with like four doubles and a triple and he literally hits the ball 800 feet and we lose it was so bad it was crazy um we're about we're about halfway through we're gonna take a take a quick break want to shout out hames homes again hames homes provides comfort beauty and value in eastern iowa Hey everybody, welcome back to episode four of Teed Up with uh, the big fellow, Luca Garza, and uh, my less important co-host, Connor. Uh, Luca, let's talk about the, the COVID year, the infamous COVID year. Uh, definitely a unique experience for everybody. No fans. Um, just kind of just kind of go into that and just ha- talk about your mindset and just everything that went through your mind throughout that whole season. Yeah, it was it was a different year for sure. You know, not being able to have fans, but you know, I think for our team it it uh, it helped in some areas because you know we were forced to you know always be around each other. Like when we were leaving the gym, we had to hang out with each other because you, you weren't hanging out with anybody else um, because of COVID, and, not, and nobody wanted to get in. And we were so locked into you know trying to make you know run in the tournament, trying to be a top five team the whole year, which we were, and. Uh, and so it, it, it was cool in, in that aspect. And I think it, it brought me closer to a lot of guys in the team um, that I hadn't been before. And, uh, you know, obviously my, you know, my roommates and, and Patrick, I was always super close to them. Um, but the other guys in the team, you know, newer guys, younger guys, I was able to get to know them better because, you know, we were hanging out all the time because you know, we'd be bored if we weren't. And uh, there was a lot of Fortnite being played, you know, different things to kind of get through a lot of Fortnite. When I say a lot, a lot of Fortnite. it is a lot. Um, For those of you who don't know, well, I'm going to butt in really quick. Um, I, I was going to include this at some point. Luca is obsessed with Fortnite. Um, this, started, this started my 
sophomore year when we when we lived at University Heights. Um, Loki freshman year, like it, it was. Uh, yeah, no, it did start freshman year. You were just terrible freshman year. But then yeah. when I say you grinded, like <laughs> you grinded Fortnite. I never really played video games. I I played two K in in high school and stuff like that. But I wasn't big into video games. And then I was I was hanging out with your guy, you and Ash's dorm room pretty much every night. You guys were always playing Fortnite. I would just watch. I'd watch for four hours straight. They provide games. comfort, beauty, yeah. and I'd value. Wait, and they, they got off, and they got off at two a.m. I didn't have a PS4, so I start playing after that. And I was, <laughs> I was horrible. I was about as good as Patrick is right now. Like I was. <laughs> that it was god awful. Like I haven't played god. Fortnite in, in probably a year. <laughs> and uh, dude, sophomore I, I, bro, I, 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 when we lived in it. When we lived at University Heights, you would wait. You you would still do that. You would wait until I stopped playing, and then like all I would hear was like gunshots until like five a.m. because oh. my room was right there. It's, so, yeah, our rooms were next to each other, and I, they'd leave the door unlocked. I'd slip in there, play almost all night, go back into my room, go to sleep, watch Netflix. I still didn't buy a PS4. I didn't buy a PS4, and I played Fortnite every single day on their on their like controllers and stuff like that. I didn't buy a PS4 until after covid started because i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't have fortnite anymore there was no i was back home in dc i was by my, i was just watching netflix and stuff like that you know everybody was home quarantining and i had to buy one because i, I didn't have any anybody's system to play on and uh so that was the first time i'd actually bought a ps4 but and that only took it to another level having my own game um but nah, I, i'm still not the not the greatest but i got myself to a, a solid level um from being where I was and uh you know still my first win uh, my first solo win still is top five greatest moments of my life like maybe above <laughs> being drafted into the NBA and that's not <laughs> <laughs> that's so much gap. <laughs> video of that no it's, it's I wouldn't I like if I could show the video at the top, work. but that it's it's right in there somewhere but no that was that was a, that was a great moment I've tweeted I think I've tweeted out the video before I'm pretty yeah. sure I have yeah, it's it's a good video for those. <laughs> you still and we still grind. You grind still. Like you have your own. We were playing the other night. Just so everybody knows, Luca has his own Fortnite character. Like it wears a Pistons number fifty five jersey. That's the type of level he's on. Wow. <laughs> so everybody knows. Like that's a different level. Like must be nice. I didn't even know must you could be. do that. Yeah, they they you know. They came out with the skins, and so I, I turned it to mine. And me and some of the guys on the, uh, my team, we play, and they put their jerseys on too. So it's kind of funny. We're all running around um, in, in the <laughs> jerseys. That's actually um, tough. Yeah. So, nah, but nah, Fortnite is a big part of my life for sure. <laughs> nah, People it, really don't know the hours that we grinded over over like the entire COVID season. Yeah, and that I mean, it honestly. It helped us get through that because you know, you know, in college you used to you know being able to hang with other people and and do different things, but you know we were so we were so locked in, we took it to another level. We weren't leaving the house. You know, we were just getting takeout, going back. You know, we were going to the gym, going to the, to the restaurant. We were eating, get the takeout, go back to the crib, and that was it every single day. Um, which is you know it's it's hard to do. You know, there's no kind of you know, uh, escape from the from the from basketball from you know thinking about the game. You have a bad game, you're thinking about it. And so it was tough, but you know we found different ways to be able to get through it, and uh, and it was still you know one of the one of the funnest seasons I've ever had, just because the guys that we had on that team and, and the success we were able to have, it was a lot of fun. And obviously it was stressful. I think we had uh, a lot of expectations throughout the whole year, uh, but you know we were able to deal with it in, in a very good way, and uh, and I still take it as as, as a, one of the great seasons I've ever had. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Um, Let's move into let's move into the, the NBA a little bit. Um, you know, we we see you've you've been playing well, really well. Um, you know, this is fresh off. We're filming this fresh off of a. You had twenty and six and fouled out on probably the worst call I've ever seen. Uh, I, I don't know. We had five fouls. I fouled out with five fouls. Went through the tape. They called a foul on somebody else. They gave it to me in the books. Just bad, but yeah, bro. I was gonna say quit hacking, but anyways, keep going. Connor. And, and I also got my first T for complaining to a ref I've ever had in my life. Um, I, I've in college, I got T's for like taunting and like talking to other players and yelling at other guys because you 
you know, that's not surprising. That's what, well, yeah, that's what I do. But no, <laughs> but, but I was talking to a ref complaining and uh, I didn't curse. I didn't say anything, but you know, the ref felt some sort of way. And, and uh, you know, obviously I didn't think we were getting that great of a whistle, but you know, it is what it is. So I got my first, first technical for actually complaining uh, to a ref. I felt like Connor in that moment, I think he rubbed off me in, in, in a bad way. Um, and uh, so I got yeah. one. But I've only had I've only had one in college, which is really surprising. Connor's I think I'm a real angry guy. <laughs> I would get teased, like I would get technical fouls when I was in like third grade. Like yeah. I would yell at the rest. It was your family. It was everybody. Just added them all in. Yeah. They, they rubbed off on me. That it's way. the example that was set for me. It's not my fault. <laughs> hey, bro, you never seen me yell at a ref. I don't know why you lumping me into all this. I don't yell at the refs. I don't, I don't know about all that. That's camp. Oh, yeah, the refs, bro. Unless people fly. Did you ever get a T in high school? Me, only for taunting. Uh, like, Patrick? Did I? Yeah. What do you What do you do? Like when? Was it, it for taunting? Yelling at the ref. Yeah, I got one for getting in a fight, and then one for yelling at the ref. Oh, I don't count the fight one. Those don't count. Okay, well, I got one for yelling at a ref. Because <laughs> I went to go, bro. The I double to go block a man. shot. I was like, when I was chasing this guy down to block a shot, and he like, just like literally like pissed his pants and fumbled the ball out of bounds. And so the ref was like, I had to have fouled him because like he just lost the. He's like, he's like just gonna lose the ball. I'm like, that's exactly what he did. And I think I I, cur I cursed at him. I usually don't curse at refs, but I was like so mad because it just like I literally just didn't even put my hands on him, and he just fumbled the ball out of bounds and he caught a foul. And I said, that's that's, it. and he teed me. Yo. And then, and then he went over to my high school coach and told him like what what I said. He's like, well, he said that was shit. My high school coach was like, cause it was. <laughs> so so he had my back. So that's that's all that matters. And we won the game, so it doesn't. Yeah, I only got two T's in college. I got one uh, for using a choice word in at Penn State. Uh, I remember that one. There was nobody in the stands, so you could hear like everything everybody was saying because it was just they they didn't have that many fans there. So when I said it, like literally everybody, their bench, our bench, everybody heard it. And so that was a tough one. Then got one my junior year, kind of out of character, like bad moment to get one at the end of a game. We were about to beat Wisconsin. It was before Brad Davidson got a figure and kind of sealed the game for us. But like Brevin Pritzel, I fell down and he stood over me and said something. And then I almost like charged at him, kind of lost my mind. And uh, they, they got two in the ball. They missed one of the free throws, which helped us out. But we were able to get that win still. But, no, nah, yeah, you're not a guy who gets many T's. So that was that was different. But and when you hear the guy, what these guys say at this level to the refs, I didn't. I don't know if I'm going to characterize mine as a T. Uh, compared to some <laughs> other things you hear from big time players, and obviously they have a level of respect and stuff like that. But no, nah, I mean playing at the NBA level is like, you know, you're living out your childhood dream every single day. So it's an incredible experience. It's a different game um, than college, um, but it's still a lot of fun. And uh, you know, sometimes I just gotta you know, kind of take a second and be like, you know, I'm, I'm in the NBA, you know, when I'm on myself, like I have a bad game or bad practice, I'm kind of just got to sit there and be like, you know, do I know where I'm at right now? You know, it's, it's the guys here are, um, you know, some of the best players to ever touch a basketball. And uh, so, I, you know, I'm always tough on myself in different areas, but, you know, I'm, I'm definitely starting to get more comfortable and it's, it's always a balance of trying to figure out what you bring to the table and how to fit that into a team, especially when you're coming from, situation where you know you're the main guy you're getting all the touches you know you got you know guys who are, who are throwing a ball in a post which you, know, you don't see in the nba uh too often anymore um but you know you got that coming every single possession in in, in, in college and, you know um i definitely miss that a little bit but uh it's it's still you know it's still a lot of fun in the transition um you know it's it, it was tough but it for anybody it's tough you know it's a, it's a whole different game um, this is, you know, this is elite basketball. These are the best players in the world. Um, and, you know, there's 450, you know, players in the NBA. And, uh, you know, these are – everybody else wants to be in the NBA. So for them, to be only 450, it just speaks to the, the level of, uh, you know, elite guys, hardworking guys who got themselves in this position. So, so it's a growing experience, learning experience every single day. And I feel like I've, I landed in the perfect spot in Detroit um, with, you know, a great, you know, support – system in terms of the general manager on, on down uh, to all the coaches who push me every single day. Um, and, and I feel like I'm getting better um, 
you know, every single day. So that's, that's a good thing. And I think I'm only going to get better and, and start to get more comfortable and, uh, you know, kind of start to do what I do. Yeah. And you're already, you're already showing that too. Um, real quick, one last, one last question. Uh, what's, what's like one thing, whether it's in terms of lifestyle or basketball, that would you say is like, is there anything you miss from college or thing that you're really loving in the NBA now that like, wasn't the same in college? Like, is there one thing that stands out? Well, yeah, I mean, there's different things. I think for me, what I miss about college is, uh, you know, we, with your team, you're always so close. And I'm not saying I'm not close to my guys from Detroit, but when you have, you know, four roommates and you're going home every day, you know, you're hanging out with those guys every single day. And you, you it's almost like, you know, uh, like How I Met Your Mother or one of those shows where, you know, everybody just kind of next day, they all come in, they all talk about their days, all like hang out. And that's not really you know, what it is at the NBA level, everybody has families, they have their own lives, they have everything they got going on individually. So it's, it's different in that aspect in terms of, uh, you know, having your guys that you kind of see every day and hang out with every day. Um, aside, aside from basketball, you know, when you leave the court, when you leave the gym, it's, it's, it's different than it is in college, obviously, you know, growing, being in the dorms, being around other athletes, being around other people. I thought that that was a very, you know, underrated part of, of you know, uh, college was just you know, hanging out with my friends and watching games and doing sort of different stuff like this. And, um, and so, you know, that, that's, that's definitely a part I miss. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, I think, and for me, just, you know, obviously I got my degree and stuff like that and that was fun, but, you know, not having school so you can focus completely on basketball is, uh, is, is fun. You know, basketball is my job. You know, I wake up and I go to the gym. It's like, I'm clocking in for work and, doesn't feel like work you know it's 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 what I love to do I love to get to the gym early I love to do all that and I get to do that every single day I can go to the gym whenever I want it doesn't matter you know I don't have an exam the next day I don't get to study for anything um so <laughs> but completely focused on on uh on the game um that is, that is a really really fun part and uh obviously the competition and, and playing in different places and the lifestyle is cool as well yeah no absolutely absolutely and the money no I'm not gonna lie it's always good Huh? Saying the money's nice. I'm not gonna lie. I wasn't there when there was. Hey, that's what I was gonna say. The first, your first part of the answer should have been the money, bro. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. driving the there. With no brakes. <laughs> Nil wasn't there when I was there. My car was getting declined after dropping 40. I'm trying to get a subway sandwich. My car's getting declined. That's a true story. And uh, <laughs> I bought my first car for fifteen hundred dollars. It was a. You can't call that a car, bro. It didn't have brakes. <laughs> that was old Bill. Hey, the foreign. It's the foreign. It's the foreign, man. Nobody knows about the foreign. I had to give it back because the brakes stopped working, but it, it was drivable, drivable for about four weeks. Uh, it got me around for most of the summer. Um, People no forget you I taped that car to fan, Chicago. I taped a fan to the dashboard. Um, it did have an aux cord that worked, though, which was underrated. Speakers were terrible, though, but. It, no, it, it was it, it got me through a lot, and that car and me, uh, you know, it's a it's a special car because, you know, when you go from that, um, you know, to to an AMG, you know, it's it's you get to appreciate that a little more. We get it, dude. You have hella money. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you drove that car to Chicago, like that can't go unnoticed. Been long distance, multiple times, very risky. I, it was, That's not safe. We, That's not safe. I drove it to Minnesota, which is like a five and a half hour drive, and uh, there's no AC in the car, so it's just burning. Like I'm sweating through everything. Like, <laughs> it's, really, it's 100 outside. No AC. <laughs> the fan is like working, but it's not. It's not working at all. I mean, it's a it's a fan taped to the dashboard. It's not going to work very well. And uh, the car got us there, though. It, it, I put a lot of miles on it, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just, I kind of realized without breaks in the ice, that wasn't going to be very, very good. When people say, like, you drive it, drive it into the ground, like, you literally drove that car. Like, that car had nothing left. Like, you it, used every. <laughs> I used everything I could out of it, but it, it didn't have much to begin with. It was, it was, uh, yeah, it was a tough drive. It was a tough drive. All right, all right. Let's, uh, Let's get into let's get into the draft. We have a we have a special guest joining us. Maggie, where you at? Welcome. She's coming. Welcome. Hello. To, welcome to episode four. Happy to have you. Thanks for having me. 
Hey, Maggie. <laughs> hey, Patrick. How's it going? <laughs> it's awesome. Great to win. So we talked about what we did uh, over COVID a little a little earlier. Um, so Luca and I would, and Maggie, we can't leave out Maggie. We would play She's Fortnite all room. day. She was the sixth <laughs> roommate. Can't leave me out either. You, I'm going to be honest. You you didn't play Fortnite like you were in the game, but you didn't play. So like, you were just like kind of like one of those bots that plays now that doesn't get any kills. It just has. It just has yeah, like I got build. some kills, bro. I, I, there was games where I, I was I was couldn't. <laughs> well, we played Fortnite during the day, and then at night, Luca and Maggie watched, and I was there for some of it. But basically, you two watched every. Correct me if I'm wrong. Every Marvel movie in order, right? Yes. At least that damn near. one's in there now, so we kind of got to go back and watch the other ones, like Black Widow and the new Spider-Man, which are part of the, the whole series. But yeah, every other one we watched. They were the new. Those are good, by the way. I saw Black Widow and Spider-Man. They're both good. Yeah, I gotta watch them. Um. So what we're drafting is we're gonna do Marvel and like Justice League, whatever you know. Um. You know, we can do Dark Knight, Superman, Spider-Man. Thor, Avengers, uh, you know, you Spider, whatever, you name it, that that is on the table. Um, so Dark Knight is on the table for Marvel, or are we separate? Yeah, like we're doing like Marvel Justice, like that. Oh, we're doing like superhero. Okay. superhero movies all together. Yeah. So just Patrick is going to get last. So it's just between like you two and me for who's going to get like first, second, third. Maggie, do you want to draft your own team, your own five, or do you want to just be like a part of Lucas? Because I thought you, you were drafting your own. I but can you can. Them. Okay. So we're going to give Maggie the first pick then. Maggie gets first pick just because. And then Luca, you'll go second. Yeah, you're first. Luca second, Patrick third. I'll go last. And then we'll snake it back. So I'll go. I'll take four, five, Patrick, then Luca, then you, Maggie, you get two. Okay. Wait, so she's got one, I got two, right? She has one, and then you are the second pick, yes. Perfect. And I'll write it, I'll write it all down. So. Easy number so, one. Shouldn't even be a discussion. Maggie, go ahead. Start us off. Dark Knight. Okay. Original Dark Knight. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if those were up for grabs. That, that they changed. are. Yeah, I thought it would be easier to make them up for grabs. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna go Dark Knight Rises at number two. I was yeah. gonna pick that one, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, I'll do a uh, undeniable gonna, first two picks. I'm gonna do Black Panther. Oh. Mm. Good one. That was mine. That sucks. That was mine. All right. I got four or five. I'm going to go. I'm going far from home. So Spider-Man 2. Was that that's the my new first one? Pick. No, that's, that's the second. It's the second one where he's like dating Zendaya. Oh, that one's good. Big Zendaya guy over here. Not, yeah. Hunter loves Zendaya. It's actually a problem. You gotta relax. <laughs> you gotta relax. All right, second one, bro. I really, I'm gonna be honest. I really wanted Black Panther, like really bad. Sure. Um, second one, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go as uh, between. I'm gonna go Iron Man. I'm a big. Oh. I'm a big Iron like Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man fan, over here. Okay, Patrick, back to me. I'm gonna just I'm I'm just gonna pick the first Avengers. I think that's a pretty easy one. Yeah. Okay. One. That's first fair. Avengers. That's fair. Luca, you. Wait, it's me now. Yeah. Um, Captain America. Oh, bro, you stole that from me. I was actually gonna pick that one. And I had a funny story with that one too. So now the whole pod missed out on that story. So now, now, now I'm not gonna tell it. But no, no, I can't. Pick it. Now, now you have to tell it that you just yeah, said. You have to tell it. No, I'm not telling it because you picked it. I wanted to pick it, so now I can't tell it. Maggie, you go. Right. Maggie, you get two. Oh. Okay. 
Doctor Strange, extremely underrated. Yeah, very good. It, you got to watch it. And... Hmm. Oh, I'd say Thor Ragnarok. That one. Yeah. Was that the second one? The third? Yeah. I think it's the second. Very good. Very good picks. Can't argue. Hasn't really been a bad pick yet. I feel like there's so many of them that like you can't really argue with any of the picks. There's I'm running really low, good. man. I'm running low. There's <laughs> a really bad movie or bad Marvel movie. All right, Luca. I'm um, next. Yeah, it's you. Iron Man 3. Yeah. That's up for grabs. Yeah. Hold on. Let me Google Marvel movies. This is partly on me. We had a change on the draft, and I forgot to tell Patrick. So that is, I, I will take the blame for that. So <laughs> normally he's already at an extreme disadvantage because he's horrible at drafting. But I'm one of the best drafters we have. Really at a disadvantage. <laughs> um, I'll do – oh, is – what's his name? A Marvel movie? What's his name? Yeah, what's Deadpool. His name? Deadpool. Deadpool. Bro, oh my god! I was gonna ask if that counted. I was gonna pick Deadpool anyway. Next pick. I'm picking Deadpool. Oh my god! That's a, yeah, that's a great pick. That's a great that's pick. That's not Marvel though. But... No, it's not. But I just saw a guy, and I was like, "That oh, Deadpool." We did. We did Dark Knight, so we can do. We yeah. Can do Deadpool. Yeah, I feel like that. I feel like that counts. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right, I'm gonna pull in. I don't know. You can tell me if this is invalid. You guys can vote on it. But I was going to pull in Wolverine, and I was going to go Logan. I think all superheroes count. I think that's fair. Yeah, if we're going all superheroes. Yeah, that counts. Okay. okay, I'm taking Logan third. That is a great movie. And then I'm going with uh, – it's a big debate. It's a big debate, but I'm going to go – I'm gonna go with the the um, Civil War. Wait, Luca, when you pick Captain America, were you picking the Civil War one or which no, one? No, OG, like the first one. Okay, okay, I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna go Civil War. Who's next? Oh, it's back Captain. to me. Um, I'll do uh, Avengers: Infinity War. I can't believe nobody picked that yet. Not everybody's as smart as me. Now it's me. Yeah, look, it's you. I think I'm gonna go original Spider-Man with uh, Tobey Maguire. Oh, oh, G Spider-Man, the real Spider-Man. Wow. I, just, I don't like Tobey Maguire. Just thought that when he's I'm hanging out in the rain, great scene, great movie. Good movie. I'm Tom a Tom Holland. Holland 2002. Huh? Tom Holland though is better Spider-Man. Tom Holland's dating Zendaya, so he's doing something right. He's a different Spider-Man. Like, he's more of like a, oh, I'm funny type. Yeah, know. it's more entertaining. Tobey Maguire's just kind of He's a real creepy. <laughs> I don't really like – wait till you see – I'm not going to spoil it, but just, like, wait till you see the third Spider-Man 2, the, like, the one that just came out, and then, like, you'll definitely have even more feelings on that. Yeah. But, I feel like I kind of gave something away anyway with that. But anyways, sorry. <laughs> Maggie, you have two to finish it up. Oh, two. You have okay. two. Avengers Endgame. Yeah. And I feel like I would say, can I say a show? A Marvel show? Yeah, why not? Loki. Have you seen that one? No, is it good? It's good. The Loki TV show. That's what I'll say. That's on Disney Plus, isn't it? Yeah. Or even I would like, this is another one too. What's the one? WandaVision. I would say that's one you got to watch if you haven't seen that. That's, um, that one, you kind of have to watch like the, this, like all of them in order to like, kind of understand that one. But yeah, that one's, that really one's good. good. But I like, I'd say Loki. Okay. Loki. I can't speak. I haven't seen that. So I can't speak on that. It's good. That pick might hurt you, though, I'm going to be honest, because I don't know how many people watch that show. So it could it could hurt you in the end. Maybe it's really popular. I don't know. Honestly, I, I think Patrick has a lot of the edge with Deadpool. That's a super yeah, underrated pick. 
That's a tough one. Could have been one of the top three picks in the in the whole thing. And he got it in like the sixth round. Yeah, all, all Connor did was talk about how bad my drafting was. I have the, probably the best draft right now. That is really debatable. Yeah. Black Panther, Deadpool, and two Avenger movies. It's not bad. It's not bad. It, it's a pretty good draft. Uh, yeah, I'll give it to like you. all the OG. That was, that was first Captain America, first Spider Man, Dark Knight Rises. Wait, whose turn is it now? It's Lucas' turn. Um, let's go. Wasn't there a second Deadpool? There was, but it wasn't as good. I thought I still thought it was pretty good. It was still it. funny, so you could pick it. Yeah. That's a good, yeah, it's not bad. Back to me. Yeah. All right. Well, Luca, I thought you stole Captain America from me, but I the one the, the one that I have the story on is the Captain America Winter Soldier. So I'll pick that one as my last pick. And it's really not even that funny of a story. I just went and saw it with my eighth grade girlfriend and lied to my mom about who I was going to watch it with. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> Good stuff. That's, that's classic. <laughs> Shout out, Mr. McCaffrey. So, so I'll pick that one. Yeah, I went with one of my other friends who also went with his girlfriend. He wasn't supposed to have a girlfriend at the time, and neither was I. But you know, who was it? Which which ZA? No, it was Kimball Henstrom. <laughs> <laughs> He's what? Mormon, and he wasn't supposed to have a girlfriend. That's a squad right there. That is a squad. All right. I'm sure, there was more of us, but me and Kimball. I okay. I was gonna pull in a Transformers, but I feel like that's just doing too much. No, like, that, that yeah, you're too. Yeah, that, that no, that's that's too much. Yeah, the first Transformer that would be Megan Fox. That makes that number one of all time. That that's the, that'd be the that'd be the steal of the draft at pick five. But I'm not I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it to you guys. Last pick. I'm gonna go. I'm a big X Men guy. I'm going the OG X Men X Men Origins. With Hugh Jackman and his brother Victor, Leave Schreiber. Yeah, Very, that movie's sick. That movie's sick. It's a sick. It's a sick. It's when he first like gets, like when it, it goes from bones to like the metal, the animantic, whatever they, you know, the the claws, like what they put in them. And is that the one where they create that super guy? Yeah. Oh, that's that combination cool. of all of them, bro. That's okay. So that they like. They create Wade Wilson in that. Deadpool. It's Deadpool. It's Ryan Rett. Like, that's the character. Because his name is Wade Wilson. Yeah. At the wow. end. When he drop, And then you see, like, he, he like, brings the, the knives out of his hands. Because remember, like, in the beginning, in the very beginning of that movie, Ryan Reynolds is that guy's son. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then like, he, he starts doing, like, experiments on him. Yeah. And so right. that's, like, I don't know. There was, like, a lot there. But. And they took his mouth off because he was really annoying. Yeah, he, he wouldn't shut up and stop talking, so he didn't give him a mouth. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't Jennifer Lawrence in that too? X Men. She she is, but she's not she's not in the very she's not in the very first one. Like her character doesn't oh. come in. I think it's the second one. I'm pretty sure. Um, like she didn't come in in the very first one. It's like the, she's got like the all blue yeah. yeah i didn't know it was her for the longest too and then she did hunger games that was like her first movie i think one of her first yeah. movies no she yeah, yeah. She's, i'm i'm a fan of jennifer lawrence as well very good actress <laughs> she's really talented Jeez. i think patrick's in the lead here if i'm being honest yeah i am I'm looking back over it right now. Like, he had a pretty good draft. I'm going to admit that I probably lost this one. <laughs> I feel like I lost too. I think, I actually think Patrick won if I'm going through everybody's. Yeah. I think it's between, I, I would say between Maggie and Patrick, but Maggie drafted a TV show. Like, that, Maggie lost her mind. You know what? Maggie lost her mind. I think it could be the winner. And maybe people will want to try it because they saw there's a TV show. Patrick won. Maggie, Maggie, trying to make a hero play like like she does in Fortnite, trying yeah. to be the hero. 
Those don't work out for me in Fortnite, though. They ne they never do. But she still makes the plays. Like she she thinks it's gonna change every other time. Team player. You never Team know. Player. That's what matters. It's, it's about the hero play. Agreed. <laughs> it's about the hero play. It is. All right. Well, that that is it. Thank you guys for coming on. Both of you, thank you, Luca. Thank you, Maggie. Thank, thank you. you for having me. We appreciate it. This has been this has been a great a great episode. We got some got some Frank stories. Got some Luca Fortnite stories. Got a good draft with everybody. Got you know Patrick. Couple couple f bombs. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, nothing wrong with a couple f bombs, man. I mean, I, okay, whatever, dude. <laughs> 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 Thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming. Appreciate it. Want to want to shout out Hames Homes one more time. Hames Homes provides comfort, beauty, and value in Eastern Iowa. <laughs>